Hey guys, what is up and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at CMU 119.0, the latest release from the CMU emulator team. Now, I did have this video already made and uploaded three days ago, but just as I was about to release it on YouTube, the CMU team released two big hotfixes that have significantly improved the quality of this new update. Instead of just releasing that video that only realistically contained half the information, I decided to just scrap that video even though I spent two days on it and remake it in the form of this one. Now, in this video, as I always do, we're going to be going over all the changes in this 119.0 version. And believe me, there is an absolutely insane change to the Vulkan API in this new release that everyone is going to find unreal. Now, as usual, this version is already released for CMU's patron supporters, and it's going to be releasing to everyone else for free tomorrow, the 15th of May. This version brings with it a lot of smaller quality of life changes, as well as the one huge addition to the Vulkan API. Let's cover the small things first, and then we'll take a look at the new changes to Vulkan. First up, we've seen some general changes and some core init changes where we've gotten updated language files and thanks to a fix in FS get mount source one piece unlimited world red is now no longer crashing as of 119.0 We've also seen it changes to how a graphics pack works. They've given us support for specifying which is the default preset for your graphics pack. So for example, if you create a graphics pack that has many different presets, like for example, clarity, you can now set which one of those presets is going to be the default one used by the emulator. Moving on to the Vulkan changes, they have added tweaks to shader and pipeline compilation counter overlays. They have fixed an issue where depth clear operations on newly created textures would be skipped. This fixes lighting issues in Splatoon and Mario Kart 8 and they have also added support for VK EXT custom border color. This fixes several issues in The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, for example erratically behaving foliage and grass. For these new features and upgrades to work, please make sure you've updated to your latest Nvidia, AMD or Intel GPU drivers. Okay, so on to the big stuff. In the Vulkan API, they have now added an experimental option to enable asynchronous compilation of shaders and pipelines. Now before I give you a demonstration of how this works, I'm going to go over the details the CMU devs have given us to explain to you exactly what this means. When asynchronous compilation is enabled, uncached shaders and pipelines will be compiled asynchronously in the background. While a pipeline is compiling, all draw calls for it will be skipped, leading to missing or broken graphics for a period of time. Since the Wii U's GPU is a GP GPU, not all draw calls can be skipped without causing gameplay bugs or persistent graphical artifacts. To deal with this problem, CMU now includes speculative logic to identify essential shaders that must not be skipped. These shaders will always be compiled synchronously and due to this, you will still experience a small amount of stutter or lag. False negatives in this system are possible and long-lasting graphical bugs can occur when async compilation is used. As a default, this option is disabled. It can be enabled and toggled on or off within the debug experimental tab. This async compilation feature is only going to work if your graphics driver supports VK EXT pipeline creation cache control. This is only available at least currently on Nvidia's Vulkan 1.2 beta driver versions 442.75 to 443.09 and for AMD GPU users it's only available on their optional driver version 20.3.1 or higher. I'll leave links to those drivers down in this description for anybody who wants to try out this new asynchronous compilation. The CMU team have also left us a small footnote under this description, here's what they say. On a personal note, we consider this feature a hack due to the unreliable and workaround-like nature. However, we also understand that stutter-free gameplay is often more important than having accurate rendering. In the future, we will introduce additional methods to reduce shader stutter without sacrificing this rendering accuracy. Now, I've been testing this async compilation for the last 3 to 5 days and man does it make a huge difference to gameplay stability. I'm now just going to give you a quick demonstration of exactly how it works and just how stutter free it can make gameplay. To show this new feature's effectiveness, 
I'm now going to delete all of my shader caches from my shader cache folder. Let's just highlight them and delete them. Now to prove I'm not using anything like a driver cache to make my games play a little bit smoother, you can also see that I have absolutely no driver cache, no shader cache, no nothing. Let's just load up CMU, load The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild and see how it runs. Now unlike usual, I'm not going to be loading any shader cache. You can however see in my compiled shaders overlay that we are now compiling shaders asynchronously. Let's just load into gameplay, I'm gonna load to somewhere you guys all know, the Great Plateau. Again, you can see there's practically no stutter in this area, our shaders are being compiled asynchronously, you can see them in the top right hand corner, and there when we load into gameplay, you can see that rather than getting any shader stutter, we get game pop in in the game world. Now by running around the game world, you'll notice absolutely no shader cache stutter at all. In my testing, the only thing I found to give shader cache stutter that's in any way noticeable in gameplay is the bomb runes or some of the other rune effects. You'll see when I throw my bomb and explode it, due to the asynchronous compilation, it's invisible the first time or not rendered, and when I use it the second time, all of its effects are rendered, and again, we get absolutely no stutter. Previously, if you tried to use Revali's Gale, the game, even on Vulcan, would lag and stutter for about a second and a half. Due to asynchronous compilation, this is completely removed from the game. Again, you'll see when I move around the game world, instead of getting lag, you're going to see things pop in, like down here in the middle of the plateau, you're going to start seeing rocks, trees, little bits of grass, foliage and things like that popping in as these get compiled asynchronously. Again, in the top right hand corner, you can see all of this happening live in gameplay. This is what asynchronous compilation is like in practice. Your game is not going to render the effects until it sees them for the first time. After that, they will be rendered correctly in gameplay. As I noted when I started this little demonstration, I have absolutely no shader cache, no driver cache, nothing. This is just how smooth the Vulkan API is going to be from now on in CMU Emulator. I don't know about you guys, but for me at least, this is pretty much a game changer and it's probably going to make me stop using OpenGL, even though on my Nvidia GPU I can get greater performance when using it. The smoothness in gameplay when using this async compilation is just uncomparable to anything we have on OpenGL. It's, as I said, a literal game changer, especially so for anyone who's playing these games for the very first time and doesn't have a shader cache already built. While the feature works unbelievably for The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, this game isn't even the best example of just how smooth asynchronous compiling is. Let's jump across to Super Smash Bros and take a look at how it works there. Again for this demo, I'm going to be using the worst possible scenario. This is 8 player Smash. We've loaded into gameplay and just look at that frame rate counter in the top right hand corner. It's basically locked to 59.5 or 60 frames per second at all times, even though, again, as with The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, I am not using any shader cache at all. The game is just buttery smooth at all times, and as you can see, Practically all of the shaders for this game are able to be compiled asynchronously, meaning that you're not going to get any stutter at all when using asynchronous shader compilation. As we saw in Smash and Breath of the Wild, there is some strange popping and rendering issues when loading games and levels for the first time. The same is true in pretty much every single game, like here in Mario Kart 8 and Wario's Goldmine, when loading into the level, basically everything just kind of loads in and pops in in front of you as you load through gameplay. Obviously, it's not ideal, but I think personally it is far better than the alternative, getting constant shader caching stutter as you play. Now, unlike Super Smash Bros, Mario Kart 8 and Breath of the Wild do have to cache some of their shaders synchronously. You can see this again in the top right hand corner, it says compiled 1, 2, 7 or whatever of shaders, and you can see that not all of them are being compiled asynchronously. As the devs explained to us, when shaders are compiled synchronously, this is the only instance where we're going to be seeing any form of shader caching stutter. Not every game is going to give you any of these stutters, only a few do, and even in those games, the stutters are so minuscule that it basically doesn't matter. Like we saw in Breath of the Wild, the only synchronous shader caching we saw was when using bomb runes, when using a magnesis, or when using things like Cryonis or the other runes in gameplay. 
these by far seem to be the heaviest shader effects in those games, those are going to give you stutter, but nothing else is. Like most of you, I definitely did not expect CMU Emulator to ever get asynchronous shader compilation. For anyone out there who has used RPCS3, you're probably aware that they have had this feature for probably two years now on their Vulkan backend, and it works super, super well, even though, as with CMU, it does have its own graphical bugs. Regardless, it's still super, super cool to see these kind of advanced features, even if they are listed as hacks by the devs themselves, making the user experience better, while at the same time making it optional is definitely the best way to go for these kinds of things. As I said, this new update is going to be released tomorrow, Friday the 15th of May, and as I also pointed out, please, if you want to try out async shader compilation on CMU, please, please make sure to download the latest Vulkan beta drivers or optional drivers for your specific GPU. With all these new features and upgrades, I'm going to be making a brand new, fresh setup guide that's going to show you how to use all of these new and advanced settings. Keep your eyes peeled on the channel, that is going to be releasing in the next day or two after release. For now at least, that's going to be it for this video. Thank you all very much for checking it out, I know this one was a little bit longer with the demonstration I did for Breath of the Wild. I just really wanted to show you guys just how well this new async compiling works when you have absolutely no caches on your system. As always guys, if you would like to support the channel, you will find donation links and a link to my Patreon down in this video's description. So if you appreciate these kinds of videos, please consider heading over there and pledging your support. Pledging really, really does help me not only in making these videos, but also in living day to day. For anybody who would like to help me out, thank you very, very much. It is greatly appreciated. Once again, guys, thank you all very much for watching this video. Remember to like it if you liked it dislike it if you didn't, and as always, subscribe to the channel if you want to see all future videos from me.